Hi and welcome back to a new video. Last week on these tables we successfully unfortunately destroyed an RTX 4090. We will definitely have an update video coming on this card once we get to it, once we have new information about it. But today I will try not to kill hardware but I cannot promise it because we will try what happens if you put a PC into water. And first this might sound completely stupid and crazy. So if I would ask you what happens if we put hardware inside normal tap water, then I think the answer is quite clear that everything will be damaged, you will have short circuits and things will be broken. If we put things into distilled water, like pure water, then the answer might not be as easy. If you try to research this online, then you find some speculation, some information that it might work for a short time and then it might also become more conductive and things might break. But what happens if we use ultra pure distilled water, which is even more clear and it's almost non-conductive? That's what we will try in today's video. I did some research on tap water and also tap water quality, also electrical conductivity of tap water here in Germany. And typically we have values between 300 to 600 micro siemens per centimeter. For example, if you would look up the electric conductivity of copper, then you would find values in Siemens per meter. So it's the same unit, but micro Siemens per centimeter is more common for liquids. And this will depend on the purity of the water and what's inside. For example, if we talk about seawater, which contains salt, so sodium chloride, it has a much higher conductivity, about five Siemens per meter compared to the tap water with about 300 to 600 micro siemens per centimeter. That's definitely a big difference. And today we want to figure out, first of all, we will measure the different conductivity. I bought this measurement device, which is made for measuring very accurately the electrical conductivity of the fluids. So that's with 2% accuracy. We can start off with ultra pure distilled water which should have a very low conductivity. Then we move over to normal distilled water and then to tap water. It would be nicer actually to test it the other way around, but if we would do that, I would have to clean this sensor every single time after the measurement because yeah, it would just get kind of dirty. This is the ultra pure water, which I bought. And on here we can see that this is at least put into this bottle at a conductivity of 0.06 micro siemens per centimeter. And just to compare it again with normal tap water, we would have about 300 to 600 micro siemens per centimeter. So it's a lot purer. Here we have our conductivity meter and to also check the sensor, you can see there are two like graphite pieces in there. And because you know the distance between them, at least that's my assumption how they measure this. Then if you have a current flowing between both of them, you can simply calculate the electric conductivity in between. That's something that's quite interesting because if you check the reading, you will see 0.8 micro siemens per centimeter. And if we go back to what we actually bought, it tells us that at the point when they filled this thing, it had a conductivity of 0.06 but that was at a point when they filled it. The thing with water and especially in combination and contact with metals is that there is something, I'm not sure how to translate it, but it's basically that a solution with water and metals will always strive to have ions of the metal being solved into the water. I'm not sure if that's the correct translation to it, but it means that whenever water is in contact with metals and it will depend on the exact metal you're using or the metal alloy, there will be ions forming a solution with the water and basically making the water over time more and more conductive. And that's also probably what's happening here, even if it's not a metal, but also the dirt in our environment will eventually make the water more conductive over time. And that's probably what's going to kill the hardware. I'm not quite sure, we will find out. I also think that while it's sitting in the water, it will make sense to also at the same time measure the conductivity. But first, let's also check normal pure water, like normally distilled water. So moving over from our ultra pure water, and you can see there's almost no difference, which I personally found when I tested this the first time 
quite surprising, also quite interesting. And now we're moving from the distilled water or the pure water into normal tap water. That's Berlin tap water. It's actually more conductive than what you can find online, which I find also quite funny. So that's 640 micro siemens per centimeter. It's already listing this as 0.6 milli siemens. But yeah, it's about 600 times more conductive than our pure water or like the ultra pure water. Back to our ultra purified water. It's again back at 0.6 micro siemens per centimeter. And now I'm adding one single bit of table salt to it. I'm not sure if you can see it. That's a single piece of salt. It took a bit of time to form an even solution with the water. But as you can see, it went from 0.6 to 3.8. So just a single piece of salt already makes a huge difference because it's like five times more conductive now. And honestly, I did not want to directly ruin another RTX 4090 for two and a half K. That's why I just picked hardware that is cheap. I had still laying around. For example, let's talk about this GT730. I mean, that's like a basic cheap entrance card on the CPU. I'm using an i3-12100, which I back then bought for my non-K testing. And I never used it again since that. And here we have some team group DDR4 modules, also to have some nice RGB maybe underwater. That's it. But we will first also just test this with the graphics card. And to also quickly prove that this is actually working. I mean, the GT730 does not perform great, not even in the GPU-Z render test, which is actually doing nothing. But apart from that, everything is working well. So I have to plug the second DIMM. I had it in there before that, but I wanted to take it out to, so I can show it in the video. But let's proceed. To start with the GPU first, I attached it to a very, very long riser cable. So we can put it in our aquarium and hopefully then see what happens to it. I also want to point out that I cleaned everything, like really cleaned everything beforehand. Also the tank, everything was double checked, cleaned, just to make sure we don't have dust or anything that could directly make the water more conductive. System is running. You can see also the render test is again running. Before we start dumping the entire container into our aquarium, I will simply pour this little bit of water over the GPU and see what happens. Well, <laughs> that was much quicker than I expected. I thought this would maybe run for a bit, but yeah, yep, this definitely crashed. Okay, that's a surprise. Uh, seems like it's working again. Maybe the water like went off the PCB. I'm not sure, but yeah, that, I mean, that's working again. Turns out it's not dead. Not yet. And, and the render test is still running. The card is almost fully submerged in water. I added a bit of RGB for extra flavor and drama. Also added our conductivity meter and it's 1.1 micro siemens per centimeter. And as you can see, the system is still running. We had some issues in between. I had to reboot once but it was still running. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it has some issues, but it's, it's partially working, not quite sure. But still, we want to find out if the PC fully emerged will still run in the ultra pure water because it seems like the GPU, it had issues, but it was still running. I want to point out that this can be extremely dangerous, especially with the PSU that is running off 230 volts. So that's something you definitely should not try at home. Also, no matter how like cautious you are, there is always a certain risk left because we have, first of all, we have the sleeve here that can somehow transport water to the PSU and also these tiny wires 
in here will be able to transport water through these wires slowly but steady. This will happen. That's what we saw with emerged PCs before or submerged PCs. So that's something you have to be cautious. I will not use these wires again after this experiment. The PSU should be fine because it should not like travel through the connector. But yeah, there is a certain risk to it. So don't try this at home. The PSU is still switched off at this point. And also we noticed that the conductivity now slowly starts to increase already 2.7 microsiemens per centimeter. First, we will switch on the PSU and see what happens. Nothing, at least not so bad. Yeah. At least it came to life quickly for a second, but just shut off again. <laughs> the PC doesn't like it. Not quite sure why. Mm-hmm. Is this maybe the last sign of life that RGB starts going off and on? I tried a few more tweaks, unplugging all the cables and moving components in and out and everything, but it seems like it does not want to boot. We had this very short spark of life that our system showed us quickly, but seems to be it, at least for the moment. If we check the conductivity, it's about 3.5 right now. And if we think back when we put the single piece of salt in the ultra pure water, it had about the same conductivity as what we have here after roughly 30 minutes of putting the system in the water. And that's with all the metals and ions like being in the water and making the water slowly more conductive. But what I also learned from extreme overclocking is that you might have a lot of water somewhere, but things might not be dead. So what we will try now is disassemble everything, dry it, clean it, and see if we can get it back alive. As you can see, there is no thermal paste underneath here. I simply wanted to keep it a bit more clean so it wouldn't go into the water. And as long as you don't have any like heavy load because we were just idling in Windows and maybe GPUZ render, it just wouldn't matter. Mm. Short disclaimer, it's only 1.5 bar, so very little pressure, so it won't damage pins or anything. I also removed uh, the heat sinks and everything to make sure there's nothing left underneath because that would be very likely. Also made sure that nothing is stuck underneath the PCH, for example. Heated everything up to about like 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. Now I'm leaving it to dry for about 30 minutes and we will check back if things are still alive or not. And while the components are drying, you could also ask yourself the question, what happens with your PC water cooling? If you use some kind of premixes like this one, which are often made out of like pure distilled or like ultra pure distilled water with some glycol or anything. What about the conductivity of those? That's why I poured some in uh, this additional cup. And now with 7.2, you will see that's about 100 times less than the tap water, what we have here in Berlin. But as a reminder, we had 3.5 with the hardware that was sitting like fully submerged in the ultra pure water. And this already did not work. So having this on your hardware is also not going to be a good thing. Everything back assembled. I hope everything is dry. And let's see if it starts or not. That looks very promising. This looks indeed very promising. I also want to point out that especially mechanical components such as 
like fans or anything that carries a bearing, HDDs would be even more critical. All of these, I'm not even sure after you dried it properly if you should still use them. That's why I also only used the Intel box cooler not to damage anything substantial, but as you can see, system is alive. All components are alive. The cool thing is today we did not kill the hardware, at least not entirely, because you can never be sure after these kind of experiments if there will be long-term damages to the hardware. That's nothing I can find out right now, but at least the setup is running, the render test is still running, so we have that. And also I think we could learn something, because if you can see the discussion again, you will be able to answer the question, can you run a PC in distilled water, which theoretically is non-conductive? has just a low conductivity, but it's conductive enough that it's causing a huge amount of issues. It was interesting that the GPU kind of worked for a certain amount of time, but submerging the entire system definitely is not a good idea. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.